Hi everybody, welcome to part three of the Brick Breaker tutorial. Uh, as you can see, so far we have a ball bouncing around the screen and we have a paddle that will move back and forth when I hit left or right. So what we want to do now is we want to make the ball hit the paddle. Uh, so let's reset here to stop it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the paddle. Bring it over. Here we go. Okay. And let's open up the ball as well. So I've got two choices here. I can put the intersection code, and that's what we're going to be doing here. We're, we're going to write code that detects an intersection between the paddle and the ball. And I can put it in the paddle. I can say, hey, paddle, did you intersect with the ball? Or I can put it in the ball and say, hey, ball, did you intersect with the paddle? Um, since I'm controlling the ball's movement, the ball is what's going to change when it hits the paddle. I'm going to put the code in the ball, but it wouldn't be necessarily wrong to put it in the paddle too. But I'm going to hit some enters here, and I want you to notice I'm staying in between these brackets because these brackets are what define the act method. The act method goes from here to here, so everything that I put between these two brackets is going to happen every single time the ball acts. So in other words, it kind of happens continuously. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of ask a question. We're going to check to see if the ball intersects with the paddle. And the way we do that is with this code. And I'm going to type it, and then I'll explain it. So I'm going to say paddle, and then I'm going to put a variable name. So I'm going to use P for paddle. And then I'm going to put paddle in brackets. And now I'm going to use a method called get one intersecting object. And this is a method that will check to see if the ball, in this case, is intersecting with a paddle, with anything from the paddle class. So this relatively complicated line of code, it is kind of a tough one since we're, we're just starting out, but basically remember we're coding the ball and we're saying, okay, let's see if the ball is intersecting with anything from the paddle class. And if it is, we're going to store the result as P. So if, if the ball is not intersecting with the paddle, P is going to be null. And null, spelled like this, null, is a fancy computer word to say kind of nothing. So again, if the ball is not intersecting with the paddle, P is going to be null. But if P is not equal to null, so this is code that means basically if P is something, that means that the ball did hit the paddle. So this is sort of a weird little double negative, saying if p is not equal to null, and what this means is basically if this is true, that means the ball just hit the paddle. Now, if the ball does hit the paddle, this is what we want to do. We want to change the y direction of the ball. So I just copied that code, and I pasted it right there. So one more time, remember we're coding the ball, so we say, hey ball, um, did you intersect with anything from the paddle class? And in this case, the reason I'm saying anything from the paddle class, we only have one paddle, but there could be future situations where we have multiples of certain things on the screen. So we're asking, did you hit a paddle? If we did, we're going to save what we hit as P. So if P is not equal to null, that means we hit something, we hit a paddle, so we want to change the Y direction of the ball. Let's see if it works. So we run it, and boom, there we go. So now we have bouncing off of the paddle, which is great, and the game is still working. Okay, so we have intersection with the paddle, which is wonderful. Now, what I want to do is I want to change the ball so that the ball does not bounce off the bottom anymore, now that we've got the paddle going. And to do that, I'm just going to take this part out. This is the part that says if the Y coordinate gets too low, let's bounce. So I want to take that out, like so. 
However, what I might want to do is at the bottom do a check to see if the y coordinate does get too low. So if the y coordinate gets above 395, what is it that we want to do? Well, we want the ball to disappear from the screen. So how do we do that? Well, we go like this. We say, okay, if the ball gets too low, meaning it's off the edge, we're going to say, let's get the current world that we're in, and we're going to remove an object. Now, what object do we want to remove? Remember, we're coding the ball itself, and since the ball is what we want to remove, we use a keyword called this, like that. So that line right there says, hey, remove me, me being the ball, from the world. So let's see what happens here. Run it. We'll hit it with the paddle. Still works. Now let's let it fall. And you can see it looks like the ball fell through. But what happened is when the ball got to a Y coordinate that was too big, it fell through. Okay. And what we're going to do later is we are going to add some more code that says, well, let's make the ball disappear, but let's also take away a life. Um, and we're going to do that later when we, use, when we learn about counters. Now, one last thing I want to do before we end this one, I want to talk about commenting. Because right now I'm starting to get quite a bit of code in here, and I want to document what everything does. So right up here, right before this line, this line right here is responsible for moving the ball. So I'm just going to put two slashes, and then I'm just going to put exactly what I just said, moving the ball. So this is a comment in normal English that will be ignored by the computer's compiler. So it's not code. It will not mess up your code. What it does is it explains to people trying to read your code what is actually happening here. So this line here moves the ball, and then I know that these lines right here check the side walls and bounce. This bit of code right here will check the top wall and bounce. And then this is a good place, a good example of why comments are necessary. This code here, like I talked about, is fairly involved. So a little comment here saying, check to see, see if the ball hits the paddle. And I put a dot 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 here because I want to continue that comment right in here and say, if it does, then change the Y direction of the ball. So this comment is kind of a continuation and explains what's going on in here. And then lastly, I'll put one more comment here that says, uh, checks the bottom wall. And if the ball uh, gets to that point, if it hits the wall, and I can do a multiple one like this if I want to, if it hits the bottom it disappears. And you'll notice how I did a I did a double line comment there, but you can also do a multi-line comment like this. Uh, putting a combination of stars and slashes. There we go. So if you like that better, you can do that too. But it doesn't really matter, at least to me, that much how you comment, as long as you do comment. Because comments help other people understand what you've done in your code, and things that might seem obvious to you, uh, especially when we're just starting out, it's nice to have kind of some notes as to what's going on. And so what I'm going to do before the next video is I'm going to go through my other classes, like My World and The Paddle, and I'm going to put some comments in there too. All right? Uh, in the next video, we will start putting some bricks on the screen and we will hit them too.